Congratulations, you have made it to the third part. Keep it up because there's lots to learn from these videos. And in this video, we're going to take a look how to use if statements and a for loop. In the previous part, we left off at the point where we instantiated a cell for our map. And the task that we're going to tackle in this video is to instantiate enough cells for our map. So you can instantiate multiple cell objects by copying and pasting instantiate. And that will create more cells when the game starts. But that's not an approach that we want to take to create all the necessary cells for our map. So instead, we're going to take a look at another thing that can help us with this. And this can be a for loop. Before we take a look at a for loop, we need to add some check to avoid a problem that we potentially can have. So the potential problem that I'm talking about is if we go to Unity, select our canvas, and then under our script, if we have nothing selected for our cell prefab, if we run the game, you can see that we're getting an error and it's saying that the variable cell prefab of the game object has not been assigned and we're trying to instantiate this game object. So a way we can prevent this error is by going inside here and then start where we actually are planning to use our cell prefab. Before we run instantiate, we can check if our cell prefab is actually available. And the way we can do that is by using an if statement and inside of the if statement, we can pass a condition that we're looking for. The result of the condition needs to be true or false. And the condition that we want to check for is if the cell prefab is not set. So we can get our cell prefab variable and then use equal equal to compare if it equals to null. Whenever a game object variable is not assigned, it equals to null. And by checking if it actually equals to null, we can catch the error before it happens. So if the cell prefab is null, we can put some code inside of curly brackets. So the first thing that I want to do is debug dot log error. And we can write an error message saying that cell prefab needs to be connected. That's the error message that we're going to display. And after we display this message, we want to stop executing the code that is after this statement. And one way we can do that is call return. Now, when we call return, we return the value that this method is supposed to return. And since this method is returning a void, we don't have to pass any value as return. And this check right here, if cell prefab equals to null, will prevent us from getting an error from the instantiate function. And it will give us an error message that we can see and fix the problem if we ever run into this issue. Now let's click save and try running it. So I still have cell prefab not set. And now when it runs, you can see that it displays our message right here. Cell prefab needs to be connected. So we can stop the game, connect our cell prefab and run it now. And you can see that we successfully instantiated a cell. Now that we looked at the if statement, let's take a look at a for loop that we can use to instantiate more than one cell. Inside the parentheses, first we need to specify a variable that we're going to use for this loop. Let's create a new variable of type int. We'll name it i and we'll set it to equal zero. Zero is going to be our initial start value. After we initialize our variable, we can put semicolon. The second thing that we need to add is the condition that we're looking for, for the for loop to run. And the condition is the same condition that we can pass in for the if statement. But in here, we're going to look at the condition of i. And let's say that the condition we'll run this for loop for is when i is going to be less than five. After a condition, we can put the semicolon. And the last part of the for loop is how much we actually want to increment our i by. So each time the for loop is done, it's going to run this part and we can say i plus plus and that will increment i by one. We can also say that i equals i plus one. That's the same thing, but this is a shorter way of doing it. So let's do that. Add curly brackets and inside of the curly brackets, we're going to have the instantiate function. Let's save the file. And if we run it, we get five cells. And that's how you set up a for loop. Now, let me try to walk through this start method and maybe clear up some things for some of you. So when the start method gets called, the execution starts from here. The first thing that we're going to be checking is this if statement. If the cell prefab equals to null, then the program is going to enter inside of this if statement and start executing what's inside of this if statement. And in here, the first thing we have is debug log. So it's going to log this error message. And then it's going to return. 
what return does, it basically returns from this method so that the program that called this start method can continue to the next procedure that is doing. So all of this code is not going to be actually executed. Now, if the cell prefab is not equal to null, then we're not going to enter into this if statement. So we're going to skip this and go to the next thing, which is the for loop. In the for loop, the first thing we do is initialize the variable i to zero, and then we check for condition to make sure that i is less than five. In this case, i equals zero, so it is less than five. That means that we're going to execute what's inside the for loop. So if we enter here, currently the value of i is zero, and we instantiate the first game object. After we're done instantiating the object, we're done running the code in the for loop, and it returns back here and runs this i++, which adds one to i. So i becomes one, and it checks for condition again. If one is less than five, which it is, we enter the for loop, i equals to one this time, instantiate another object, increment to two, instantiate another object, increment to three, to four, and then once we increment it to four, we come back here, it increments to five. But since five is not less than five, that means we need to stop running the for loop. So we skip this execution and continue on in our code. We don't have anything in the code here, so it just returns from this method. So this is how this method runs, and hopefully you understand how the if statements and how the for loop runs right now. Now, in the for loop, we use a value of five here, and it will work fine for us because we have five items in our map. But if we decide to add one more item, let's say we would add another cell with zero. Now we're not going to create enough cells to display the whole map. So it'd be nice to use the length of this array to actually check for the condition here. And if we check the map variable, we can actually find that we do have a length variable here, which returns the length of an array. So inside here, instead of writing five, we can actually say map dot length, and that will check for the size of the map. And now the for loop is actually going to check for the size of the map and create enough cells to display this map. So at any point, if we change the values, it's going to change accordingly. So we don't have to modify any numbers here. And it will be just looking at the length of the map. So this is one way we can actually create enough cells for the map. But there's another for loop that we can run, and it will look even cleaner than this. So what we can do first, let's comment this out. And you can comment multiple lines by selecting the lines, you can hold control, click K, and then slash that will comment those lines out. And let's create another for loop, it's going to be a for each loop. Now a for each loop works great with arrays and lists. We haven't looked at lists yet. But we do have arrays. And how you use a for each loop is you specify the value that we have in the map. So in our case, we have integers stored in our map. So we can say a type of int, and we can give a name for a variable that we want to call each of these numbers. So I'll just call it numbers. And then after our variable name, we can write in map. And this loop is going to run for each integer number inside the map. So same thing as we did before, add curly brackets. And inside here, we can just call instantiate cell prefab and pass the transform as the parent. So I showed you two options of using a for loop. And how I decide which one to use is if I actually need the index position inside of the for loop, then I would actually use this approach. But if I just want to go through the map, and I'm not using the index position, then I would go with this approach. Now with this, we're going to finish for this part. And in the next part, we're going to look at how we can pass this number to our cell class. So we're going to be looking more into classes and how the classes work. If you have any questions, write in the comments, click on the like button if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.